I finished making the hive components for a new hive and I thought before I put them into action I should show the beginners out there these components in case they're one to get into beekeeping. What I have and what is the most common is a Langstroth hive. There are other types of hives, top bars and such. And people do have those but this is the most common type of hive that you'll come across. And uh, this is the type of hives that I have. So that's what you're going to see. <laughs> Okay, the first component we're looking at right here is a screened bottom board. As you can see, it has a screen on the bottom. This is the bottom piece I'll show you here. When the bees come in, they're going to land right here. This will be their landing spot, and they'll go right into the hive. There'll be hive boxes on top of this, but there'll be a gap right there, which you'll see in a minute. The bees can come in here. This allows for ventilation. It gets really hot here in Texas, and also it's supposed to help with small hive beetles, which are a nuisance. Supposedly the beetles fall through the holes in the screen, but the holes are too small for bees to fall through. So, I don't know, make it out what you will. I, I don't know that that has anything to do with it. I do like it as far as ventilation goes, because I think it's got to help. Anyway, in the back you'll see there's a groove right here, and that holds one of these. Now this is just a uh, corrugated plastic, they call it coroplast, that's what you see all the political signs are, are always made on. So anyway, it's just a piece of that with a piece of wood, it slides right in there like so, and then as you can see, it makes the bottom so that there's a uh, bottom. Now also there's a thing called a mite drop check and when you're checking for varroa mites there's several ways you can do it. One of these boards is one of the ways. What I like to do is I'll cover this with oil, uh, cooking oil or PAM spray type stuff, slide it in there, leave it on overnight, come back the next day, slide it out and count how many mites are on this board. That will supposedly tell you if you have a mite problem. I could see it from two ways. If I got a lot of mites on the board, maybe that means my bees are really good at picking mites off of other bees and that's why there's so many here. Or maybe it just means that there's a shitload of mites in the hive. You'll have to uh, research up on that and see what you want to do. But I do like these for the opposite reason that I like the screens in the summer. I like these in the winter to cut down on that cold air coming up in the hive and making it hard for them. So I'll leave those in there like that. So. That is the first component that is known as a screened bottom board. On top of your screened bottom board, you'll have one of these, which is a hive body. The hive bodies come in several sizes. They are all the same size this way, they're just different sizes in how deep they are. This one is known as a deep, it is the largest that they make, and that's what most people use on the bottom. This allows for them to raise a lot of brood in this big box. After that box, a lot of people will, you, will put another deep box, and then they'll start putting smaller ones. The smaller ones are known as mediums, or you'll also hear them referred to as an Illinois. You can see it's not quite as deep as a deep. There's also another one, which I think they call a shallow, which is even smaller than this. I don't own any of those. I don't use any of them. Uh, some people will use all mediums, and the reason being is when these get full of honey, they are incredibly heavy. I can't imagine trying to lift one of these deeps full of honey, because when I lift the medium full of honey, it's, it's a pretty good amount of weight. Um, I, don't, I know I could lift it, but boy, I don't think it would be fun knowing you got bees and everything else in there and struggling with that kind of weight. So anyway, back to our first box here. I like to use one deep, and then I use mediums after that. Usually, the queen will lay in this bottom box and then up into this medium box. Every medium box I put on after that will just be honey. She won't lay any eggs or larvae in there, usually. These are the frames that go inside the boxes. Obviously, the frames that go inside the mediums are a little more shallow. They're not quite as deep. This has a foundation which is made of plastic. It's been coated with beeswax. This uh, just makes it easy for the bees to take to it. And they will take these little hexagon patterns and they'll thicken this out on both sides. It's called drawing out the comb. Now these bees do not need this foundation. 
they can do it without. As you'll see in one of my medium frames here that I made, it doesn't have any foundation in it at all. And the bees will build it down. But usually what you want to do is take uh, some sort of starter strip. I'll just use this as an example. Something that's an eighth of an inch because that's how big that groove is. But you put a thin piece of wood, a popsicle stick even stuck in this groove here. I don't know if you can see that groove or not. There you go. So you could stick popsicle sticks in here or something. Just something to give them a guide in the middle so that when they build, they'll take more of a chance of building straight down instead of building off to the, to the side and messing up other combs. That's the main, really the benefit about these already being here is it just keeps the bees building straight. If they don't build straight, let's say you have three like this and they start building across, well you go to take one of these out and you've got comb just ripped and torn because it's connected to all three of these frames. When these are nice and straight, you can take them out, examine both sides, put them back in, and there's no big deal at all. These hold 10 frames. Like I said, once you have this on, then I'll usually have a medium once the hive starts to grow a little bit. And then there'll be more and more mediums after that. All right, we're going to do a quick reset here. The dogs started barking like crazy, so I had to get them shut up and we'll get back. Don't remember exactly where I was, but as I said before, this is a deep. There's 10 frames that will be in here. I like to use a medium box after that. And then as they get bigger in the winter, I mean in the summer, more mediums. There'll be 10 frames in this, 10 frames in this. On top of this, you have what is known as an inner cover. The inner cover has a hole in it. I like to put a jar of syrup so that you can feed the bees. Um, there's a little bit of a lip in here. Gives the bees room to move around in here even though you put it on top. So it can go either way. That's called your inner cover. And it sits right on top like that. And the bees can come up out of this hole and walk around in this middle area here if they want to. On top of all of that, you will have what's called a telescopic inner co uh, telescopic cover. Now, this I just made so I don't have any uh, sheet metal on it. I will put sheet metal like you've seen on the other hives just to protect it from the weather and stuff. So you have your inner cover here, the telescopic inner cover and it sits on top like that. It just keeps the rain going down, the sides, whatnot. It'll have, like I said, sheet metal on top. This is basically the hive. There's one final piece that I can show you here if I haven't misplaced it. Okay, the last, the last component uh, for the beehive, this is called an entrance reducer. This has a big gap here, a small gap here. In the summer, when you've got a full hive that is at full strength, you don't need anything to reduce this. There are so many bees, they can guard this entire entrance from other animals and stuff that want to try to get in, or bees from other hives that maybe want to come steal their honey. But when you have a hive that's brand new, you want to use an entrance reducer. By using it this way, and you slide it in here, only this little opening, so it's very easy for one or two bees to guard that opening and only let so many bees in. As the bees get more, you just rotate this, and you've got a little bit more of an opening, so a few more bees can protect it. Then, whenever they get full strength, you can take it out completely. Also, in the winter, I like to put this in because they shrink down in the winter. I like to put the entrance reducer back in. It helps keep that breeze from whipping in and out of there. And it just leaves them a smaller hole because in the winter, they're not just flying out every day uh, by the thousands and going to forage. So you don't really need that. This is all of the components. Bottom board, hide bodies, deep, medium. They also make a shallow. You have your inner cover. You have your outer cover and you have an entrance reducer. The other thing you have, remember, a slit in the back is one of these. 
to cover up your screened bottom board. That is a Langstroth hive. I hope this has helped you. Uh, maybe it's explained some questions you might have had about some of the pieces. And maybe it's helping you get into beekeeping. Hopefully so. I'd love to know there's more people out there in beekeeping. It seems like uh, a lot of people find it exciting when I talk about it. But not a lot of people want to take that leap. So it'd be cool if more people did. There's plans on the web if you want to make it yourself. Or there's a ton of bee stores if you want to buy the stuff. Alright, I don't want to go on and on. Hopefully that helped you. This is Josh in Plano, Texas.